Hello and welcome back to another video from Tech Spotlight. It's been four months since I picked up my FireMax 11 tablet and I just wanted to discuss was this worth the money? And you may be asking yourself too if you've been debating on picking up this tablet so I'm going to discuss just that if it was worth the money that I spent on this tablet so let's jump in. So I'm not a really big tablet gamer so most of what I use my FireMax 11 for is mostly going to be checking my emails, scrolling some social media, uh, but for the most part I use it for listening to Spotify and watching movies and shows on Netflix and things like that. So if you're big on gaming I won't have much insight, but for most other general use I've got a ton of time using my FireMax 11 in the past four months. One of the first things I wanted to go over is sound quality. The sound quality is pretty decent. I'm not going to say that it's amazing, but it is pretty good. Um, I've been watching a ton of The Walking Dead here lately and getting to hear the sound of zombies heads getting bashed in is pretty satisfying I must say. Why don't we take a listen to that happening actually. Now other than listening to zombies get their heads bashed in on The Walking Dead I actually do a bit of reading on my tablet as well. While it may be small, it may be dumb, one of the biggest reasons that I made the decision of purchasing the FireMax 11 over the Samsung Galaxy A8 Plus was literally because the FireMax 11 has the turn page animation. I know it's silly, but for me, I just thought it was kind of cool because I, I loved reading books the past several years, and just having that feeling of like you're actually reading a real book uh, was just pretty neat to me. So that was actually one of the deciding factors on why I spent the money and purchased the FireMax 11 for myself. Other than the increase in specs, I, I do also have a uh, Kindle Fire HD 8 Plus, and before that I had the Kindle Fire HD 10 uh, base model. So seeing the increase in specs was pretty nice with the octa-core processor, the storage space, uh, it's pretty minimal to me because you can just spend you know 10 or 20 bucks and get a micro SD card and put that on the tablet and double if not triple the amount of storage space that you actually have to use. Getting the upgraded 128 gig model didn't really make much financial sense to me so I went with the 64 gig model. Now the screen itself um, is pretty bright, not amazingly bright but it's pretty bright, it's got pretty vivid colors and everything. When you're watching shows like The Walking Dead, it can get much more dark, but that's just due to the atmosphere of the show. Uh, other than that, the screen itself is pretty glossy, so if I were using it outside or by my window in my living room or something, there'd be quite a bit of screen glare, so I actually spent the money and picked up some anti-glare uh, screen protectors, which has helped drastically. Um, I love sitting out of my uh, deck out back and reading a book or, like I said, watching The Walking Dead and having the anti-glare screen has changed the fact that I can use my tablet much more outside um, on a really nice sunny day. So I do highly recommend that you check out some anti-glare screen protectors if you don't care so much about the glare. They've got uh, fingerprint smudge resistant ones as well that are a pretty good value. So when it comes to cases there's quite a bit of, of case availability out there that you can get. Uh, I do want to point out though I actually purchased a few different cases before I just settled on the one that I have. For the main point being, some of the manufacturers of the cases don't take into consideration the placement of the buttons, the placement of the speakers, and things like that. So the case that I actually have has the speakers where when you have it in standing, in the stand mode, where the speakers are actually pointing down, whereas it'd be much better if they were facing up. And then also the power button and then the, power, the volume controls are on the bottom of the left hand side of the uh, body for the tablet. Now when it comes to battery life, the battery life is excellent. Um, I've actually had days off where if I'm at home most of the day and I'm just kinda doing dishes or laundry or just lounging around the house or whatever, where I'll just put The Walking Dead on and I'll just take my Fire Max 11 with me room to room and you know set it down on you know my dresser or you know countertop or whatever and basically just binge The Walking Dead all day and from a full charge I can go the entire day and maybe the end of the day I'm only at like 40 to 50 percent battery life so battery life is excellent. I do want to point out when it comes to charging however that the FireMax 11 is capped at 15 watts um, in power input 
uh, for charging. So from a fully dead battery, it could take somewhere between four to four and a half hours or so to fully charge the tablet. So, you know, if you're going about your day and stuff like that and you have to charge it, you may not be able to get much charge in short spurts um, consider, compared to other tablets and devices that you can get up to 20 watts max with fast charging. And so typically it doesn't bother me particularly too much because I can just throw my uh, FireMax 11 on charge before I go to bed at night and when I wake up it's fully charged and it doesn't feel like it really hindered my experience with it. But again, that's just how I'm using my tablet and what I can, you know, say is a detriment or overlook. So, uh, but I do want to point that out. If you're more of a busy lifestyle and you feel that you may be in that position, um, you may want to cater to the fact that it does have all day battery life, but if not, it can take a while to regain some of that energy for use. So I will honestly say when it comes to overall performance and specs that some Samsung tablets and iPads definitely can outperform the Fire Max 11. But again, most of those are going to come at a slightly higher budget. So it just depends on what works best for you and your financial uh, situation. I personally feel that the Fire Max 11 is a really good tablet for the budget. It's typically $229 for the 64 gig model, but I do see it going on sale quite frequently for anywhere from $150 to about $170 which is where I would say is like the perfect price point, especially for an 11 inch screen. The Fire Max 11 doesn't do anything amazingly well, but for what I use it for, it does everything pretty good. Now, if you may be using your Fire Max 11 more for uh, work and productivity, the keyboard case that it comes with would be an amazing option. I haven't picked one up yet myself, but I do plan to in the near future just to, to see how that works and do another review for you guys. So. If you feel that you're going to be using your Fire Max 11 for mostly, you know, checking your emails and, you know, maybe checking Facebook or, or binge watching The Walking Dead like I do, then the Fire Max 11 would be a perfect fit for you. And I know it would be great within your budget too. But if you're using it for other stuff, you may want to look at some other options that are a bit more uh, spec heavy that can handle those applications a little bit better. So there you have it guys, there's my quick review on my four month update with my Fire Max 11 on if I feel that it was worth the money that I spent on this tablet. I absolutely do. It's been, been a pleasure using this tablet and I look forward to continuing to use this tablet in my daily life for the coming months. If you haven't picked one up already and you feel like what I'm using it for would work for you, make sure you check down in the video description and I'll have links to the product so you can go check it out and see if it's on sale and save yourself some money. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing on this video and tell me how I did or what you think about the Fire Max 11 or if you happen to have any questions. But until next time, guys, have an amazing day. This was Tech Spotlight. I'll see you in the next video.